what we are going to start with today is uh, one of the hottest kind of tech words and kind of the hottest thing in the economy right now, blockchain. And you're like, what is it? I don't think I fully understand it. What are the use cases? How can I use blockchain? And I'm going to introduce block and mortar. And they're going to tell you more about how you can use blockchain and what it is. Take it away. Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Anjali Merchant, and I'm here with my colleagues, Annabelle Lau, Claudia Bake, and Kate Haney. Today, we're going to be talking to you about Block and Mortar, an app that allows for the grassroots exchange of goods and services using blockchain technology. Unlike Craigslist or TaskRabbit, Block and Mortar allows users to buy and sell goods and services using blockchain technology. You may be familiar with blockchain because of Bitcoin or John Oliver, <laughs> but blockchain technology, blockchain, a blockchain is a decentralized digitized public ledger that allows you to track transactions. We wanted to build this app so that we could lower the barrier to entry to blockchain technology. Our app provides a safe and secure environment for buyers and sellers to make transactions. I'm now going to pass it off to Annabelle, who will walk you through our app. Thanks, Anjali. So let's say you're a user named Irene, and you want to sell your record player. You would first make sure you're logged into MetaMask, a plugin that functions as your digital wallet, followed by block and mortar. From here, you can make a post for your record player and fill out a few details about your item. Um, the price is in Ether, but in case you need it, there's a link to a currency converter right there. Um, and then once you hit submit, you create a transaction on the blockchain. Then we're taken to the marketplace and you can view the new post that you just created and also browse some other goods and services for sale. I also need a new mattress, so I'm going to click on the item to learn more and I can also view the seller's transaction history to see whether or not they're reliable. All looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and place an order for this mattress. Um, once again, we are taken to MetaMask to confirm the transaction. I can also then message the seller to see where to meet up. Assuming the meetup goes well, I can complete the transaction and the money will be transferred. Then both the seller and I are able to see our block uh, blockchain ID. Next, I'll pass it off to Claudia who will talk about some of the technologies we used. Thanks, Annabelle. While this transaction seems simple, our biggest challenge was figuring out the data flow of this app. We first had to consider where our data will live. We could have stored everything on the blockchain, but that would have been a costly process. We, every interaction with the blockchain, it costs a small number of ether, and it also takes time to fetch data, and we wanted a seamless user experience. For these reasons, we decided to store only the transaction data to our blockchain and rest in our Postgres database. And then we had to figure out how our front-end state would interface with the blockchain and backend using React and Redux. Uh, we, when, whenever user uses our app, we could have sent simultaneous requests to the blockchain and to the backend. Instead, we use promises to ensure that our database would only be updated after we get successful response from the blockchain. Now, here's Kate to talk about more on the blockchain technology. Thanks, Claudia. Um, we had to uh, familiarize ourselves with five new technologies in order to write to and interact with the blockchain. We used the Solidity language to write our smart contract, which allowed us to codify the way we were interacting with the blockchain and the information we were storing there. We used Truffle and Ganache as our Ethereum development environment to, use, to test our smart contract. Then we used MetaMask to allow our users to log into our app and access our app using their personalized um, Ethereum digital wallet. Finally, we used Web3 to connect our app to our blockchain and communicate with our smart contract there. So that's our stack. And uh, this project just gave us a really good opportunity to familiarize ourselves more with blockchain technology. We had a great time working as a team together and learned a ton from each other's different strengths. And we're really excited to bring blockchain technology to local communities. So please feel free to visit us today at blockandmortar.nyc or check out our code on GitHub. Thanks so much for listening. Yeah, that was... Uh... That was really great. Um, I, I, I I love to see uh, that we're having more and more projects these days experimenting with blockchain. Um, I think some of them are running into like the natural constraints of uh, 
working on the blockchain as well like as you know as this group said that they had to uh they had to have their own local postgres database as well because you know it would there would be too many limitations to storing um all the data on the actual uh, blockchain and so i think um Anyway, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I think they did. Very yeah, well. I think yeah. move over eBay. We're going to have more secure, <laughs> decentralized um, buying and selling of goods. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, I love like the puns you get on the blockchain. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. And it's just a quick reminder: if, if you would like to vote for Block and Mortar, like this post and like the pinned comment, and we'll tell you the vote. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, I agree. It's like it's. I think the use of Solidity being close to JavaScript is a great um, way for people to get be able to practice with it and get into it. blockchain yeah we'll need to see more applications like this as crypto becomes more mainstream yeah, yeah not even crypto finding the other use cases for it yeah. i think is what is really impressive about that